In this lesson, we're going to cover deduplication and compression, which are both space saving techniques that are available in data on tap. And we'll cover deduplication first. Deduplication eliminates redundant duplicate blocks in a volume. By saving only one instance of a block rather than multiple copies of it, disk space can be significantly reduced. For example, let's say we've got a company that's got 10 departments and each department has got their own folder in a volume and we've got a 10 megabyte spreadsheet file and each department has got a copy of that in their own folder that is in that volume. Well, that's going to be 10 copies in 10 different folders of a 10 megabyte file. If you add that up, it would be 100 megabytes when we're not using deduplication. But if we do turn on deduplication, that ensures that only one copy is saved in the volume. Duplicate blocks are going to be saved as references only, just as pointers to the saved copy. So now, rather than having 10 copies on disk of that 10 megabit file, we're only going to have one copy that is taking up disk space. The other nine copies are just going to be composed of pointers. So now we're just going to be using up 10 megabytes worth of disk space for one copy, rather than using up 100 megabytes of space. Let's have a look at how deduplication works. So here I've got a file, it's financials XLS, and it is 20 blocks. I've got a copy of that in my volume in folder one. And then I make a copy of the file and I copy it to folder two. Then I make another copy in folder three, and on the copy in folder three, I make some edits to that. I add 10 additional blocks. Well, if we weren't using deduplication, I've got the first copy is 20 blocks, the second copy, another 20 blocks, the third copy, the original 20 blocks, and the 10 blocks I added, that's 20, add 20, add 20, add 10, that would be 70 total blocks. But if we turn on deduplication, we can see how much space we're going to save by looking at the identical blocks. In the diagram here, the blocks that are colored in blue are identical. And I can see in each of the three files, I've got the 20 identical blocks there. And then I've got 10 unique blocks in file three. So if we add that all together, it's with 20 identical blocks and the 10 unique, that makes 30 blocks now. So without deduplication, 70 blocks. With deduplication, it's only taking up 30 blocks. We're getting over 50% space savings there. For the scheduling with this, deduplication normally runs as a scheduled task outside business hours, but we can also run it manually on demand. It runs as a background process and it's transparent to clients. It doesn't affect them. It can be run on any type of storage, primary or backup. If you do run it on backup storage, then typically you're going to get really good space savings there because with your backups, there's going to be lots of duplicate data as you're backing up the same data on multiple days. Next, let's have a look at compression. Compression is very similar to deduplication, and we have it for the same reason, which is to save disk space. But where deduplication looks for duplicate blocks in a volume, compression attempts to reduce the size of a file by removing redundant data within the file. So deduplication is working at the block level, compression is working at the file level. By making files smaller, when we compress them, less disk space is going to be consumed and more files can then be stored on disk. For example, let's say that we've got a 100 kilobyte text file. Well, we could maybe compress that to 52 kilobytes in our example by removing extra spaces within the file or replacing duplicate character strings with shorter representations. An algorithm recreates the original data when the file is read, and obviously the more redundant data that's in a file, then the more it's going to be able to be compressed. 
Compression can be configured to be carried out post-process during idle time, or we can do both post-process and inline compression as well, actually when we write it. Inline compression can have an impact on your latency performance. So if you are going to enable it, you want to test it on that particular workload first and make sure it doesn't have too detrimental an effect on the performance. Deduplication and compression are both configured on and work at the volume level. So this can affect how you want to do your volume design. If you've got duplicate data, but it's in different volumes, then you're not gonna get the deduplication savings there. The blocks have to be in the same volume to get the deduplication savings. Space savings achieved depend on the workload that is using the volume. Different workloads are going to have different amounts of duplicate data at the, the block level and different amounts of compressible data at the file level. Workloads with a lot of duplicate data will see large benefits from enabling deduplication and workloads where the files have a lot of duplicate data will see large benefits from enabling compression. Deduplication and compression can be enabled independently or you can enable them both at the same time in combination with each other. If you do enable them both, then compression will be completed before deduplication. The slide here is taken from the NetApp website. You can see with the legend, the bar in blue is when we enable compression only, green is deduplication only, and yellow is when we enable them both. And you can see here that for a lot of workloads, we'll typically get really good space saving over 60%. For example, virtualization, if you're running a VDI, virtual desktop environment, then all of those virtual machines will be running the same operating system. They're gonna have the same patches applied. They're gonna have the same applications installed. So you're gonna have a lot of duplicate data there. You can get really good space savings from enabling deduplication and compression. And also for other workloads like databases and file services, we get really good savings there too.